So the need for separation. Why do we actually need this process? Well, often substances that we want or need are bonded to other chemicals in the environment. So for instance, you rarely find any metals like iron or copper just lying around in a, in a lump somewhere on the ground. They're usually bonded to other things, so we need to be able to separate these things so that we can get the iron or copper back. So in the previous lessons, we've talked about aluminium refinement, and that's an example of how a mixture should be, needs to be separated before we can get a useful product. So often these natural substances need to be separated from impurities to get the substance that we desire. Now, in order to separate mixtures, we can use a number of different techniques. And these are based on the physical and sometimes, well, mostly the physical properties of the chemicals that you want to separate. So the techniques presented are based on physical properties and can't be used to separate compounds into elements, okay? So I'm about to talk to you about different separation methods. And they're all based on these physical properties. So boiling points, melting points, density, um, solubility, those kind of things. So we can't use these to actually separate these compounds like aluminium oxide into elements like aluminium. Okay, so that's where we're going with this lesson today. So we're going to talk about separation in terms of basically scenarios where we want to separate two different things. So the first scenario is separating solids of different size. So in this case we have you know, two solids that are different size in terms of their grain size and we want to separate them. So two common methods is to use sieving or centrifuging, okay? So for those who bake very regularly, not like me, you would use a sieve to separate the flour in order to get a very fine mixture of flour at the bottom. So sieving uses a fine mesh to allow particles smaller than the pore size, so the, the size between the, the metal mesh, to slip through while blocking the larger objects. So the larger parts are stuck by the, the very small holes and very fine particles get through because they're obviously smaller than the, those holes. This process is used to ensure a fine distribution of flour for baking. So for baking purposes, you'd use this to get a very, very fine and even distribution of particles through your flour. So you wouldn't get any big clumps, essentially, is what, what, you're, what we're saying here, okay? That's saving, and it's basically the, the property that we're exploiting here is that you know, one particle is simply bigger than the other particle, and that's a physical property, it's size. So one particle is bigger than the other, it can't get through the hole, so that's the property we're exploiting. Okay? So when I, as I go through this, try and think about what properties we're actually exploiting before I tell you, and then it'll help you clarify what these processes are actually doing. So we actually can use sieving in industry to separate valuable ores from waste rock. So we can actually sieve like, larger rocks that are useless, from smaller, um, more valuable rocks. 